The Nigeria Medical Association in River State has lamented the lack of personal protective equipment, PPE, for their members in frontline duty in the fight against COVID-19 in the state. The association also disclosed that 22 of its members and 60 other health workers in the state have tested positive for coronavirus and called on the states to urgently increase the hazard allowance for doctors under the state government's employment. The chairperson of the state's branch of the NMA, Dr. Obe Lebra Adebi, said that he regretted that despite government's efforts at containing the spread, the state was still recording high number of cases each day. Now joining us is Christian Medical and Dental Association Chairman of Wyoming State, Dr. Kevin Bassey. Thank you very much for joining us on the news. Good morning. Thank you. Thank you Dr. very Bassey, much for having have me. You on. All right. Um, with the increasing positive cases of doctors with COVID-19 and the threat of strike, what more do you think can be done to safeguard frontline workers? Okay. Um, the, the, there's, there's truly an increasing number of cases of health workers and doctors who, who have come down with COVID-19. And then um, the government needs to do more. We all need to do more to make sure that the, the, the health, the life of health workers on the front line are safeguarded. And then um, some of the things I believe the, the government can do is to scale up testing. The, the federal government can do that by making sure that there's a virology lab, a functional virology lab in all their tertiary centers, the federal teaching hospitals. Um, at least the, there's about one in every state. And, um, you know, up until just a few weeks ago, the only virology lab for the whole entire South-South was in Evora. And that's quite a way from, for example, where I live in Akwaibo. And thankfully, we have a lab now with state government owned and managed. There's one in Port Harcourt as well. So if, if there was a way that people who came into our accidents and emergencies could get a test, you know, on time, within hours of their presenting and they didn't have to wait to be listed and it would take days for them to get tested. Um, it, would, it would go a long way to protect the health workers who are seeing them and taking care of them. Um, they would, it would be easier, you know, if you suspected COVID-19, we could put you, triage the patient to, you know, an, another line of care and the patient gets tested and then can be moved to an isolation center. But frequently what we see is that there's doctors in our accidents and emergencies in most states of the country without adequate and appropriate um, personal protective equipment. And they have to see patients, you know, because that's our calling, that's what we do. They have to see patients ill protected. And, um, and, and it just happens that because the patients who are really ill are the ones who come to the hospital the doctors are exposed to these really ill patients who are most likely to be shedding a lot of the virus and the doctors and nurses who take care of them come down. All right, let, let, me, let me ask you about these doctors you're talking about. Is there any other way that the government can speedy up providing these uh, PPEs as well as making sure that the testing time is reduced? Okay, well, speeding up providing PPEs is by making sure that the hospitals are supplied with PPEs. And um, I, I know there's some local manufacturers who are trying to make PPEs. Perhaps the government could incentivize and support them so that we get these PPEs to the places where they are needed. You know, purchase N95 respirators, face shields, you know, and gloves, and um, a gown or an apron, apron at the minimum for doctors and nurses at all our entry points in the hospitals. Uh, you know, that's accidents and emergencies, children emergencies, outpatient clinics. Um, and we're scaling up testing, like I said, we, we need to get the labs. We need to decentralize. Some states have to send samples to another state that is hours away. And so because of that, they have to batch this test. They have to decide, okay, we'll do this once a week. 
So and, um, you're, you're basically saying that the best option yeah. will probably be having testing centers in each state that doesn't in take so state, long. Every federal yeah. teaching hospital. Okay, let's let's hope to see that the NCDC will get there, but. So talk about the situation in a river state. I'm sure they're not, it's not peculiar to them. We heard the other day that the federal government has, you know, is going to make sure that the hazard allowance and other concerns that were raised will be addressed, including the issue of the PPE. The case of rivers is that they've come out now to say that they still have not been paid those um, allowances and, of course, the shortage of uh, PPE. Have you been paid? What do you know about this hazard allowance? Okay. Um, the federal government uh, had an agreement with the associations, the Association of Resident Doctors, the NME, and other um, health associations, Johesu, the nurses, the, the pharmacists, and lab scientists, to pay 50%, um, I believe, of basic salaries as hazard allowances in the first instance between March and May. I, I, I think that's what they agreed on. I hope my facts are right. And um, well, I, I worked for the federal government, and um, well, I haven't been paid as of today those allowances. So um, for the state government, I think the agreements are dependent on what the state government agreed with them. I, I wouldn't know what to say about that. But for my own center, we, we haven't been paid as of this uh. point. Uh, all right. Um, as we continue to see a rise in the numbers, is there cause for optimism that we could see a turn in events that we're getting closer to the peak and the flattening of the curve? Yeah, there, there's, there's cause for optimism. I mean, the other day we saw that New Zealand had, had gone down to zero new cases, zero active cases, and they were able to, you know, relax social distancing rules. So basically, they have you know, completely flattened the curve. And uh, many other countries are on their way there. So there's enormous, enormous reason to hope, enormous reason to hope and enormous reason to be optimistic. But the, the truth is that you can be optimistic you know, when you're doing the right things. And um, you know, just a few weeks into relaxing the lockdown, what do we have in Nigeria? Nobody's wearing masks anymore. Social distancing rules are not really being followed. Even the public places that are supposed to ensure that they have, you know, um, hand washing stations, hand sanitizer, you know, it's not being followed or it's being followed sometimes. And, um, you know, there's not much enforcement of all of this. So part of, part of the way to make sure we get there is to do the right things, the way New Zealand and other countries did the right yeah. things. And that's to make sure everybody is wearing a mask. All that right, Dr. You, Kevin Bassi. The other person. Yeah. Thank you so much um, for your time with us. I'm afraid that's the much we can take at this hour. Thanks for thank your time. You.